Sorry, I am using an awful lot of gaff tape to hold my, I've taped my phone to the wall. Um, it might never come off. Hi. A few months ago, right when the coronavirus goings on were just beginning to really go on, Gamut first postponed and then canceled its young acting company show, Cinderella. I was really looking forward to bartending that show, and I was looking forward to watching it because it was my son Andrew's senior show. Um, so I shared in his disappointment and the disappointment of 50 kids when that show absolutely had to be canceled, and responsibly so. And we've all had to let go of a lot of things these last few months, and for whatever reason, this wasn't something that I was willing to let go. So with a lot of help from a lot of people, particularly Andrew, we are resurrecting the Young Acting Company show as the Cinderella Project, the first Gamut Theater podcast. Now, if we were doing Cinderella in the theater, I would be able to make some themed cocktails for all of you. And I love making the Gamut themed cocktails. But I don't see any reason why we shouldn't enjoy a few cocktails while we're listening to the Cinderella podcast, even if we have to do so in a socially distanced and responsible manner. And in fact, this actually allows me to make slightly more complicated cocktails than I would have been able to manage at the bar, um, partly because there are wiser people than I telling me to tone it down, um, but there's nobody here who's going to tell me to tone it down. So I've got three cocktails, uh, plus possibly a bonus cocktail, depending on how things work out, that I'd like to show you how to make. And I hope that when we release the first episode of The Cinderella Project on Friday, July 24th, you'll make one of these and sit with me and listen to the work of 50 kids who all managed to create something rather wonderful. That's, yeah, no, that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some fun Cinderella drinks. Okay, all right, so the first Cinderella drink I'd like to make is actually a drink I found online called Cinderella because that's often the place we start when we're looking to make a themed cocktail for one of our shows is uh, we start to Google around and see if there's anything online uh, that corresponds to the show. And there is, um, there is a Cinderella mocktail already in existence, so I thought I would make that for you today. All right, let's start with the Cinderella. For the Cinderella, we're going to be looking to for a taller glass. Okay. For the Cinderella. You are going to take a lemon. You're going to squeeze that lemon, or you can have lemon juice out of a bottle. That's fine, too. And similarly, you're going to take an orange, or you're going to open your orange juice. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to squeeze it like that. I'm just going to do this. All right, um, that was a good bit messy, so we're just gonna maybe reset one sec. Here is some orange juice that I squeezed earlier. And then here is some lemon juice, some grenadine, some pineapple juice, and some ginger ale. Quantities are not super important for this, 
So I'm not actually going to use the little measuring thing because um, I'm not worried. Instead, who am I going to use? I'm going to basically see how much orange juice I have and then do it like that. So, put a little ice in your shaker. Put one part orange juice. Oh, perfect. One part lemon juice. One part pineapple juice. And a splash of grenadine. Shake that up. Okay. A little bit of ice in your glass. Oh my lord, that's pretty. Strain your juices. And top it up with ginger ale. And if you wanted to turn this mocktail into a cocktail, you can just add your spirit of choice. I think with all this going on, you're probably looking for something like white rum or vodka. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, that's good. So having the fresh lemon juice and in equal quantities to the orange and the pineapple means that even with the ginger ale, this is not too sweet. Make Cinderella's for the whole family. That's fabulous. All right, that's one cocktail down. Okay, the second of three Cinderella-themed drinks we're going to make is called the Godmother. And the Godmother uses a rather wonderful ingredient, which I will explain how to make called oleosaccharum, which is a terrible name for a rather wonderful thing. Oleosaccharum basically means oily sugar, which is what it is. So we'll just pause for a minute and I'll explain how you can make your own oleosaccharum and then we'll come back and make the cocktail. I'm putting the orange peel in my little bowl. And I'm going to do the other one. So, depending on how precious you want to be about it, this is a little better than like this because the more white stuff that you leave on the peel, the more likely the result is to be a little bitter. Where I read about this, was called a trash cocktail. And the idea was that as you ate your oranges or squeezed your lemons over your chicken or fish, you would save all your citrus peels over the course of a week, maybe in like a plastic bag in the fridge. And then you would come to the next stage. So we're doing this as a special process in and of itself, but we don't have to. We could just be using the peels that we would be, that we'd taken off our clementines and our lemons. Mm, in fact, I think maybe I'm going to go add a lemon to this. I brought a lime too. The idea of the garbage cocktail is that instead of throwing it out, You take your peel and throw it into your plastic bag in the fridge. And I like that idea because it's kind of the uh, the waste not thing. And then if you want to get real choosy about it, the same idea is that the white stuff 
is the pith and that can make things bitter so you could get rid of some of it like that okay and now if I had a fairy godmother, or if I were a fairy godmother, which would be even handier, let's fairy godmother this stuff. Okay, great. So, basically, you want half as much sugar as peel. So, I think I'm going to decide that looks like a cup's worth of peel. And so I'm going to add a half cup of sugar. All right. I'm be just turning the peel around and around in about a third of a cup of sugar. All right, I think that looks good. And now that's gonna sit overnight. Or if you were the sort of person who wakes up in the morning and does kitcheny things, you could do this first thing in the morning and it'll be ready by cocktail hour. So the oleosaccharin has been steeping for a while. I actually left it overnight and that means it's ready to decamp. I'm using a piece of cheesecloth because I, my little strainer guy, it's not gonna last long if I keep trying to squeeze things through it. So this way I can actually be a little fierce with the rinds. I might not pause and do it now, but I'm probably going to take a spatula to that in a minute because I don't want to lose any of this good stuff. So now that I've got it all wrapped up in my cheese cloth, you can't see because you're above. I am squeezing the bejesus out of this sugary rind. And what's, so we've added no liquid to this. This was just citrus rinds and mashed with sugar. Okay. And there you have some very, very, very wonderful sweet citrus oil that we are going to turn into a wonderful cocktail. Alright, so now that you've got your oleosaccharum, we're going to take a glass, get yourself a little bit of ice, and maybe two teaspoons of oleosaccharum. Then, if you've got Campari, you should use Campari. We don't have Campari because the liquor store was out, but we do have Martini and Rossi Bitter, which is pretty much the same thing. So, the proportions here are based entirely on how used you are to drinking Campari which is a wonderfully aromatic, but somewhat bitter liqueur. So if you are committed, if you're a Negroni drinker, start with maybe one part Campari to two parts soda. If you are just dipping a toe in the Campari waters, try one to four or even one to six. So give yourself a splash of Campari and then give this whole thing a really good stir to incorporate the oleosaccharum. So, um, Campari has an orange base, which means that it, that using the oleosaccharum really brings up that in particular flavor um, really well. And it's a wonderful way to, again, slightly sweeten it, make it a little less bitter, make it a little more refreshing. 
And then once you've got your oleosaccharum incorporated into your Campari or your Martini and Rossi bitter, top up with soda. This is called the Godmother for two reasons. One, it's because Martini is Italian and Godmother sounds a little Italian, but also because it looks so benign and there's just a little surprise when you dip into it. I can't find a straw, so I'm just going to try it as is. It tastes like the Italian seaside. So, that is the godmother, and that's the second of our Cinderella-themed drinks. All right, so the third Cinderella drink we're going to make is called Sisters. Calling it the Sisters is tidier than calling it the Marie, Charlotte, and Ella, which is a mouthful, but it's also who it's named in honor of because this is a drink that's a little spicy, a little sweet, and a little surprising. And when you listen to the Cinderella Project, you'll understand why that is so extraordinarily apt. So, to make the sisters, we're going to start by making, where did it go? Here. Another secret ingredient, which is uh, jalapeno-infused simple syrup. So, let's go back and figure out how to make that, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to start making a jalapeno infused simple syrup. Simple syrup is just dissolved sugar and water. So it's got a little saucepan. Um, I'm doing like three quarters of a cup of water. Um, so about three quarters of a cup of water and an equal amount of sugar in the water and something to stir it with. Um, we're about to put this on the heat, at which point it will dissolve more quickly. But I'm pausing for a moment to cook up the jalapeno, which I've got right here. And if you hear the dogs barking, it's because so many of our neighbors are celebrating with fireworks for weeks. And the poor dogs, they don't get it. So depending on how you like your heat, you can choose to leave in the seeds or remove them. The more seeds, the more heat. Um, so I'm probably going to leave in the seeds because part of the point of this in particular cocktail is that it is both sweet and spicy. And then, but if you were going to take out the seeds, you can cut it in half like this. Take the guys out like that. Your men, you can just go or what we're going to do Now this whole thing is going to go on the stove. I'm going to bring it to a boil and I'm going to let it simmer for like 10 minutes. So it's at a boil and I just turned it down to a simmer. I'm going to leave it like that. Just sort of bubbling away for a few minutes. Okay, now that the simple syrup has had time to both simmer and cool down. I'm going to decant it. That is good. All right, next steps coming up. All right, now that you have your jalapeno infused simple syrup, we can go forth and make the sisters. So, a couple of things here. 
I think that people should feel free to make cocktails at home even if they don't have fancy ingredients. I used a shaker for the first drink. I find this kind of shaker with the two ends um, confusing and unsettling. It worries me because I feel like I'm not using it correctly no matter how I use it and I'm always afraid I'm going to um, explode drink up in my face or all over the counter. So what I prefer to use as a shaker um, is a mason jar. And there's no reason you can't do that too. Into your shaker, start with some ice. Going to put in two ounces of gin. Two ounces of elderflower liqueur. You're gonna take your jalapeno sugar syrup, put in one ounce of that. So if you're keeping track of proportions, it's two, two, and one. Now you're gonna take some basil leaves. Um, the friend who taught me how to make this drink said that the thing to do with basil leaves is you had to spank them. To release the oils. I don't know if you do or not, but it's very satisfying, so I recommend it. Two basil leaves. Put your top on your shaker and shake away. Now, if you don't want to make jalapeno infused sugar syrup, you can actually add jalapenos at this stage. You can put in a couple of slices of jalapeno with your gin and your elderflower and your basil, and it will be almost as good, but the jalapeno flavor won't be as strong. If you make jalapeno uh, syrup and you want even more jalapeno flavor, you can put in a couple of slices of jalapeno at this stage. As well. And I'm giving this, as you can see, a really thorough shake because we're trying to get the oils from the basil leaf, basil, the basil leaves to really release. Okay, so if you have a martini glass, you can use it. Drink it like this. And it is meant to be sipped slowly because, oh my goodness, that's good. It's, um, it's a lot of drink in a little glass. Or we can make this a little bit more summer friendly this way. You have ice in your glass. And then you're going to top it up with grapefruit soda. Now, you can, oh, it's a twist off. Hand. Adding the grapefruit soda not only dilutes it a little bit and makes it an easier summer afternoon kind of drink, um, but it also sweetens it just a bit. And there you have the sisters. Two versions 
All right, so if you wanted to make this a mocktail, you can absolutely do it because if you have a mocktail drinker with an adventurous palate, and just do it like this. You can find um, elderflower lemonade at Wegmans pretty easily. You can also find elderflower cordial at Ikea if you happen to be in Philadelphia or Baltimore. Um, and I suspect we could find it more locally, I just haven't seen it. So you can take elderflower cordial, one measure of elderflower cordial, one of jalapeno, simple syrup, top it up with grapefruit soda, and you have a sweet and sharp and spicy mocktail. This is really good. So when I was looking up and figuring out recipes for the Cinderella cocktails, I, um, so here's one last Cinderella themed cocktail for today. It's a blender cocktail. So put ice in your blender. Put quarter cup of vodka in your blender. Put a little bit of water with your vodka in your blender so that your blender has something to kind of get its teeth into. You got a little Kirby cucumber, one of these little guys. Okay, you put your cucumber in your blender. Get a lime, squeeze your lime. with your handy dandy little citrus juicing thing. The juice of one lime in with your cucumber and your ice and your water and your vodka. Put, well, it says a quarter of a cup of basil leaves. I have no intention of measuring. Put some basil leaves in with your cucumber and your ice and your water and your vodka and your lime juice. What do you think? Yeah, that probably looks enough. Put three tablespoons of sugar in with your cucumber and your basil and your ice and your vodka and your lime juice. And then, then take this whole thing and put the lid on and go off and make something amazing. Oh my lord. I'm running out of glasses. This is a two person drink, okay? This is not just for one. And here's the real bonus for this drink. Is that you get to name it. Here's the fourth Cinderella drink. It is green, it is herby, it is cooling, it is vodka, and it's wonderful. And it's a lot. So tell us what you think it should be called, and then we'll make that the official title for this, your fourth and bonus Cinderella cocktail. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Bring Your Peggy Pub Cinderella Cocktails home. Please, if you have the means, Donate to Gamut Theater. You can find us on the web at gamuttheater.org backslash donate. And also keep your eye out for the very first episode of The Cinderella Project, which is coming very soon on July 24th. We are also very excited to share that with you. And there are other Gamut productions being shared. So keep an eye. We are always coming up with new and exciting ideas to share with you like this drink whatever it's called you tell me because i i don't know